listening to the most original talk radio station anywhere. We are L.A. Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on L.A. Talk Radio. Welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we're coming to you live from Studio City, California. Our show is broadcast every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If this is your first time tuning in, our show will help you question your career reality. Now, this show is for you if you were, are, or might be considering a career in the entertainment industry. Our guests will provide advice, advice, resource information on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in show business. Our guests work in various professions of entertainment, so that means that we will definitely have someone on the show that is um, – it's from a career that you're interested in. So you have to tune in every week to every single show. Absolutely. If you want to check out our past guests, read their bios, listen to their interview instantly, or download one of the shows, go to the LA Talk Radio website. Now, if you're listening to me right now, you're already on it. So um, you go to the top of the page and you click on the link at the top of the website that says Channel One. You scroll down and look for the graphic of our show question reality and click the link this is going to take you directly to our archive page where you can view the list of past guests our shows are also available for download on itunes under the podcast section you just type in question reality radio in the search box and that should take you right there Now, if you want to find out about our future guest who's going to be on the show, um, we actually have it booked until the end of August. So, my God, if you want to be on the show, if you're a professional in the entertainment business, you better hurry up and send me an email because we're almost finished for the rest of the year. Uh, Or if you know someone. Now, you don't have to be in Los Angeles to be on the show. We do offer remote shows. So just send me an email at Priscilla Leona at yahoo.com and let me know that you want to be on the show or you know someone who's a professional in the industry and we'll take a look at them and see if they are um, qualified to be on the show. Well, if you're a professional in the entertainment industry, you're halfway there. Now, uh, the official website, if you want to find out about the future guests, is questionrealityshow.com. Questionrealityshow.com and you can see who we have on again up until the end of August. Now, we have a fantastic guest for you today. Um, Her name is Monica Peterson, and she is a singer and an actress, and she was referred to me by one of my favorite people in the whole world, Jeannie Diva, and Jeannie Diva is the creator of the Diva Method, which is a Uh, a method of voice, teaching voice that will turn you into a wonderful singer and you end up wearing, winning an American Idol. So check out GeniDiva.com if you want more information on that. But Monica Peterson, uh, let me give you her website address, uh, MonicaPeterson.com, and that's M-O-N-I-C-A-P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N.com, MonicaPeterson.com, and get your pen and paper because we have have um, a wonderful class coming up that I'm going to tell you about, but go to uh, Monica Peters, we- Monica Peterson's website and read along with us. Uh, her bio was so extensive, we couldn't put, we can't read everything to you today. I'm going to do just a little brief bio on her a little later, but you can be checking her out on the website while I am going over this wonderful class. It's a great, great, great commercial intensive workshop class and it's coming up it's with a uh, casting director Scott Wisner Scott Wisner and it's going to be at the Actors Creative Workshop and as you know the Actors Creative Workshops they have the top top casting directors there doing these workshops for actors to teach them or give them tips. Again, sort of like what I do, give tips and advice and uh, resource information on what you need to do to improve yourself as an actor. 
Now, this class is going to be held on Thursdays at 7.30, starting at 7.30, and it's going to be, I hope you got your pen and paper ready, May 5th, May 12th, May 19th, May 5th, May 12th, May 19th, very low cost, $175. That is a steal, really good for, for Scott's class. Anyway, Scott has over 25 years' experience in casting and production, and he's directed thousands of commercial casting sessions. So um, if you want to get into doing commercial work, which is very lucrative, makes a lot of money, uh, and it doesn't take a lot of time. It's so much faster and easier than doing a feature film. Commercials are a great way to make income in this in these hard economic times, they're still doing a lot of casting for commercials, so uh, you want to check it out. Now, Scott helped create – he was an original partner in Beth Holmes Casting, and when he started there, within three years, they had annual billing, billings of over – uh, like a million dollars. So this is this is really good. So this means this is a very, very lucrative casting director office and they are booked by a lot of the top advertisers. Now, in this class, you're going to learn all the secrets to booking commercial work. So some of the questions that you might have if you're an actor are things like, um, you know, what are you actually in control of in a commercial audition? Because when you go to these commercial auditions, they can seem really over overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff going on. So if it's your first time and you don't know, you might not have the etiquette that you really need uh, to go on to, to a set. So this is something that you learn in the class. And you need to know if you're a beginner, you need to know who really makes the decisions. You, you can learn the difference between the client and the ad agency. Um, it, this class will help you explore and and take the right approach and you'll know what the right approach is and what the wrong approach is to slating because there's actually a right approach and a wrong approach and people who don't know who slate if you don't know what slating is you're most likely a beginner and haven't even had an audition yet so that's basically when you go up uh, when they call you up and you introduce yourself to the camera you tell oh my name's Priscilla Leona um, so there's a right approach and a wrong to approach to that. And you'll also learn how to feel comfortable in front of the camera with the directors and producers. It's a very awkward, intimidating situation for a lot of people. Some people are very comfortable at auditions. You know, there are people who are excellent at auditions, and there are people who are terrible at auditions. There are people that are horrible at auditions but are great actors, and then there are people who are great at auditions. But not so good at the acting, believe it or not. So it's 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 a weird situation. But you'll also find out how you're able to show your personality in an interview situation because when you go into auditions, you literally could have – anywhere from 30 seconds uh, minimum to actually make an impression. So you've really got to know what you need to do. And these are all things that are covered in the class, okay? So you definitely want to take classes before you get out there and try to go on auditions, and this is a class to take. So you can find out more about this at actorscreativeworkshop.com, A-C-T-O-R-S-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E-W-O-R-K, shop.com or you can email to register for the class and uh, you can find out the payment instructions the email address is info at actors creative workshop dot com actors creative workshop dot com so i would check this class out scott is awesome and i've i've heard a lot of great things about him so it's definitely worth the money all right now we are on to the fun 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 learning about monica peterson our guest today now monica has a very fine european and american background in music theater television and film and she was trained at some really prestigious places like Neighborhood Playhouse Drama Academy in New York, the London School of Music and Dance in Covent Gardens, London, England, and 20th Century Fox Studios in Los Angeles, of course. And she received the ABC 
uh, Star of Tomorrow Award, the 2000 Women of Achievement Award, Women in Film Award, and a Poetry Award. She's listed in Who's Who in Entertainment and Who's Who of American Women. She's a member of SAG, AFTRA, and various other equity unions. She's a graduate of USC. Now, musically, Monica is a singer of jazz, popular music, and also standards. And as a singer, she's performed concerts in the famous Olympia Concert Hall in Milan, Italy, as well as other cabaret and concert venues in Italy. And she's uh, performed in Finland, Spain, Portugal, Sweden, Denmark, and of course, the United States. And there are some interesting facts about Monica. She has made, she made the Grammy list in 2007, and she sings in 10 languages. Not one, two, three, but 10. 10. That's like alien. That's just so, there's something weird going on. I don't know if she's really human, because who sings in 10 languages or something weird? We're going to find out what it is. So without further ado, do monica are you here today yes i am i am here what is up with that singing in 10 languages how in the (laughs) hell did that happen what part of my life it's spiritual i love languages it comes very easy and of course by going to all the different countries you have to learn their culture and part of that culture is their singing they love it. So anybody wants to be a singer and going abroad, try to learn the culture and the language of singing in that particular country. Now, do you sing? Do you sing all songs in ten languages, or is it just specific songs that you sing in ten languages? Like, for example, <laughs> "Autumn Leaves." Do you just sing "Autumn Leaves" in ten, ten uh, languages, but you can't sing uh, "Girl from Ipanema," or do you just speak? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you just speak ten yeah, well, languages? I sing, I sing the songs that fit the country. In I, I sing "Autumn Leaves" in French. If I'm in uh, Brazil, I sing Black Ophias in Portuguese. If I'm in Turkey, I will sing a song in Turkish. And wow. uh, whatever language. Wow. You know? and, wow. And then I, it becomes very easy with me. I think it's just part of my calling. I really do. Well, let's go back, Monica. Let's go way back when. Let I always start this question. This is my first question usually on every show because I like to know where it all started. So what did you want to do or be when you were a child? Who did you want to be? What did you want to do? Did you want to be a singer or did you want to be something else? I was always singing and I, you know, just plays in junior high school and in high school, and of course in college, I decided to study something that I could fall back on, which of course I have a major in international relations, foreign policy, mass communication, journalism. So that, I'm telling everybody, they need to have education of something to fall back on. So, so... Mm-hmm. So as a child, you knew right away that you wanted to be a singer. There was no question. I wanted to be in show business. I wanted to be an actress. I won quite a few beauty contests, and I have won quite a few singing contests. But then when I was uh, in New York, of course, I've been a Playboy bunny, too. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. You know, I I I had uh I have a friend that actually her her best friend was uh one of the double mint twins that dated um uh uh oh, what's his name? Hugh Hafner. So Hugh oh? Hefner, yeah, Hugh Hefner, yeah. So I had the pleasure of meeting Hugh Hefner. Oh my God, I think maybe nineteen ninety ninety eight or ninety nine. Uh, my girlfriend was performing at a restaurant in Hollywood called Melrose Place, and she called me up and she said, "Oh, by the way, I'm going to be inviting Hugh Hefner, and we need to get this this room. And he only drinks Dom Perignon, so I need you to order all these bottles of Dom Perignon." So I call my <laughs> friend who owns the restaurant, and I tell him all this. 
this. So he's like, are you sure that he needs 12 bottles of Dom Perignon? I'm like, absolutely. That's what my girlfriend said. So he comes to the restaurant. He watches my girlfriend. Oh, he comes with his security guards. He brings the double mint twins plus two other girls. And I meet him. I shake his hand. Oh my God. His hands were like rose petals. I said, you can tell you have not done a day of hard labor <laughs> in your life. And he said, and I never planned to. And um, so that was my experience with him. And then afterwards we went to a party, blah, blah, blah. But he was a very, very nice man. Uh, very nice. Yes, it's a nice family. It's a very, very nice family. But you see, um, today, I was I was Playboy Bunny in New York. New York and Chicago were the best. And that's where you really had to be on your toes. And from there, I, of course, I studied drama at the Academy, which was not far from 57th and 5th Avenue, which is where the club was. And, you know, fortunately... As a Playboy bunny, someone saw me and said, you know, you would be great at the 20th Century Fox. They're looking for someone that has star quality. So they had an audition at the, at the academy where I was studying. There were 75, 75 to 50, 50 to 25, 25 to 15, and 15 is when I was called to 20th Century Fox to do a screen test, singing, dancing, acting. It wasn't given to me on a platter, and others were there, Tom, Tom, uh, um, Tom, not Selleck. Tom Cruise. Selleck, Selleck, Tom Selleck, mm -hmm. yes. And quite a few others were there, um, uh, Mia Farrow, Raquel Welsh. So I was in, we were all, I wish it was still there. That now, was we're one talking, of the we're, we're, that was a long time ago. I mean, I'm from Connecticut, so I'm very familiar. We're talking, that must have been way back in, what, the 60s or 70s? 67, that's how I came to California. I didn't voluntarily to come to California. <laughs> I was brought here by, on, you know, red carpet, the red carpet. <laughs> Yeah, because when when I read your bio and it said that you were uh, you were one of the people who was signed a contract uh, because they don't do contracts. They haven't done contracts at the studios. You, you they don't sign you to those contracts to do what what. In a ta I think you had said that you were in a talent contest or an audition. I can't remember, but I know that they haven't done that for decades. So oh, no, I no, no, no. This was when the contracts, the contracts are not there anymore. Right. Uh, unfortunately. But you, if, if you think of all the well-known stars um, like um, Pierce, Mildred Pierce, You'd be surprised. All those people had uh, seven-year contracts. Nick I know. Uh, um, I think even Liz Taylor. Liz Taylor had a contract, mm. but it wasn't talked about. So that was the same thing. I was under the same umbrella. But then all the um, the, the uh, clubs in like Universal, 20th Century Fox, Metro Bone there, there was um, actresses who had won contest. And also out of that, I went to Vietnam for a couple of times, which was absolutely fantastic. So my career, I'm really blessed to have such a wonderful career, but you must be focused. I was very focused. Now, well, let, your bio states that you're a graduate of USC. What what was that degree? What 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 did you was it in the arts? What did you get your degree in? I got my degree in foreign policy, international relations. It's called IR, international relations, foreign policy, and mass communications. You have a major and a minor degree, and journalism. So I wrote for the Trojan also. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that I can work in TV. I can be a news person, you know, 
That was something I have in my back pocket. <laughs> well, you have so many things in your back pocket. Well, you know, when we sent out your email, uh, we got a lot of people, when we sent out our mass PR uh, camp, when we did our mass PR campaign, which we do every week to promote our guests, uh, we got a lot of emails back with people who had questions for you. So I, I want to make sure that I get some of the questions in. Hopefully we have time for all of them. But let's just... To start with our questions so we can uh, be polite and answer people who take time to send questions, right? So uh, here our first question comes from Brenda from Baltimore, Maryland, and she said, um, how, dear Monica, how did it come to be that you have the ability to say, oh, I think we covered that question. How did it come to be that you have the ability to sing in 10 languages? Oh, well, Brenda, we already answered that question, so <laughs> I <didn't, laughs> There you go, Brenda. You already got your answer. Okay. Our next question is from uh, Tristan from Lumberton, North Carolina. And Tr I don't know if that's a male or a female, but uh, Tristan asks, uh, Monica, what steps did you take to make your musical career happen? Well, number one, you have to get an excellent teacher. You have to practice. You have to want it. You have to want it from the feeling. You can't just sing a song. You have to know how to interpret a song. And it has to come from you. You just don't get out there because somebody have your own life challenge you. And you say, I'm going to do this. This is what I want. And that's what you do. You focus on that. I think everybody can sing. But if you want to be a professional singer, you have to study singing. One of the things I think you should also study is how to read, how to read uh, the music. You know, and you can't, you have to know the keys. You have to know what is key C, key A, key B. You know all your keys. It's not, it's, it's not as simple as some people think. But you have to, in order to be a professional singer, you have to have a professional background in music, meaning study. Study everything about music. There are a I, lot of books. I agree. I, I know a, a lot of singers that, and I always found this interesting. I, I was thinking to myself, how do they actually make it as, as a singer? But I know a lot of singers who actually do not know how to read or write music. And I, I've worked with singers who, who can read and write music. I've worked with singers who just know how to write a couple chords. And then some who don't know music at all. Um, and, and I find that the musicians that they work with, the ones that where the singers can at least minimally write a couple chords uh, for their original music I'm speaking of, uh, when they're trying to interpret with the musicians, that it, it goes along a lot smoother and the mus musicians aren't as frustrated as a singer that knows absolutely nothing about how to write music and is trying to explain how the song is supposed to go. So I agree with you on that for sure. So try to learn. Well, you, don't, you don't have to. You don't have to know how to write a score. Right. I mean, be, be able to know what keys tra you can transpose. You know, if you don't have the money to have someone to write an arrangement, learn how to transpose a sheet music into your into your key, and you just hand it to the musician and says, "Look, I like to do this in key E flat." F, G, and you'd be surprised. The musicians love that. And you get more Absolutely. respect in the music business. That's right. And if you do, if and and if you don't know a, a a musician to do that, that 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 um won't do it for you for free. You can actually get a student to. You can pay a, a guitarist to actually do exactly. it. You know, fifty That's bucks true. and get your sheet music for sure. Um, and there's there are there's a lot of musical software actually these days which you Today. can sing into, and the the software will tell you what key you're singing in. So there's exactly you know there's even you can even do it uh, in a in a more uh, modern way. Now our you're next speaking question, of, you speaking yes. of karaoke. Um, well, there's uh, lots of applications. Um, I think uh, GarageBand is is one of them, and then there okay. is uh, there's like four or five uh, 
applications. My husband is a, a musician and he has all these applications and he was telling me how easy it is to do that. So um, I don't know the names of them, but I'm sure if you typed it in Google, it would tell you. But I think GarageBand is one of them. Now, mm-hmm. another, now our next question comes from Rockwell from Staten Island. And Rockwell, I assume this is a gentleman. Rockwell says, uh, Dear Monica, who are some of your favorite musical influences? Oh, my goodness. There's so many, but Ella Fitzgerald. I idolized Ella Fitzgerald, Carmen McRae, Sarah Vaughan, uh, Anita O'Day. Those are the songs, those are the, the um, singers that I learned to, and of course, Frank Sinatra. I tell everybody, listen to Frank Sinatra for his phrasing. You want to phrase and interpret to Listen to Frank Sinatra. Ella Fitzgerald is the greatest. You know, it's it's interesting that you said that about Frank Sinatra, uh, Monica, because I met, I have met in my life, like so many foreign people who said to me that uh, I'm specifically thinking of a Vietnamese gentleman. He's very famous in the Vietnamese community. Um, He is an Elvis Presley impersonator. And he came here and did not speak a word of English. And when I met him he spoke very well and he would sing in English and sounded almost identical uh, well not (laughs) identical but maybe 10 degrees of separation from Elvis Presley and I said to him how did you learn to speak English and he said from listening to Frank Sinatra songs he said if you ever want to learn English listen to Frank Sinatra and he told all his Vietnamese buddies and they all listened and learned how to speak English And sing by listening to Frank Sinatra. (laughs) I found that crazy. And you know what? Frank Sinatra learned from Ella Fitzgerald. Really? I did not know that. Yes. He learned how to phrase from Ella Fitzgerald. That was his idol. Wow. Yeah, that's Ella's phrasing, Sinatra's phrasing, interpretation. He gives him credit. Well, she's no longer here, but he always gave her credit. Well, you know, I what I I don't know if you have the answer to this, but uh, I I find this to be very interesting, and I it is my quest in life to find out the answer. No one has honestly been able to tell me yet. But my husband, it's it, and I I thought it was just him, but but upon talking to other jazz musicians, I have found that they also have the same problem. My husband can listen to songs and he doesn't understand the words. He understands the music because he plays uh, jazz guitar and bass. And he, of course, the music is the only thing he hears when he, when he hears the vocals, it sounds like like that to him. And I said, what do you mean? And for me, I hear vocals first and music second. Um, and, and I thought it was just him and I thought he was a weirdo. So I go, I'm asking these other jazz musicians, do you hear the music? And I was surprised that a lot of jazz musicians say, I don't even hear the words or I don't understand the words either. I just hear the instruments. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Why does one, that happen? Uh, one, well, you know, uh, do you remember uh, Miles Davis? Mm-hmm. You've heard of Miles Davis? Of course, yes. All the time. You have. <laughs> you have jazz musician enthusiasts like uh, Stan Getz, uh, Chet Baker, Miles Davis. Unless there is somebody like Ella, Ella has a musician's voice. She can sing like a horn, and she has sung like a horn. When she improvises, all musicians understand. So I completely understand what your husband is thinking about. I don't understand what she's saying. I understand the music. That's yeah. what he's into. Yeah, he see my husband he 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 only understands Frank Sinatra and uh Tony Bennett. 
like, what? He can understand. He said Frank Sinatra is the only musician that he actually doesn't have to struggle and really focus and concentrate on understanding, which I find, <laughs> excuse me, is fascinating. You know why? You know why? Because Sinatra and Tony Bennett sing songs straight. They're straight ahead, no chaser, as yeah. they say. Uh, no pun intended. Now, let's get to our next question. This is from, this comes from Alan from Arlington, Texas. And he says, uh, Monica, have you ever performed with any celebrities? And if so, who was your favorite celebrity to perform with? As a singer or as an actress? I do not know, because that's the well, question. Well, you could tell him I was in MASH, and that was with Elliot Gould and Donald Sutherland. I performed with quite a few well-known um, um, European actors. Like recent, my most recent, I did Cleopatra, and that was, of course, with Charlton Heston. He was the director. But uh, there are quite a few in Europe because I've spent a lot of time in Europe, most of my adult life in Europe. In America, I've done quite a few commercials, which is what I'm, I would like to uh, impl implicate, that any actor who's looking to really uh, finance their career is to co concentrate on getting commercials, which is what I'm doing also. But... Uh, I have worked so, you know, to here in in, uh, in California, I've worked, I think it's on my website. You yeah, know, if, you the, go um, to, if you want to know more, go to her website, monicapeterson.com, and she has uh, all of her credits there, and you can see the credits, and then you'll know pretty much who was in it. You can pull it up on IMDb, so there you as go. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I opened in Stockholm, Sweden for Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, you did? Don't, don't get any better than that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, for me, it would get better if it was Shirley Bassey, but. <laughs> I know the... Shirley Bassey. Wait, 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 wait. Shirley Bassey, I followed at the Olympic Autotron, which is the biggest thing in, in uh, the biggest theater in Milan. Shirley Bassey, <sighs> Monica Peterson. What? Oh, my God. I and love I love Shirley Bassey. <laughs> uh, I just saw her on an episode of the Graham Norton show, which I love. And for those of you who don't know what it is, it's sort of like Jay Leno, but it's in in England. It's a it's a late mm -hmm. night talk show. And I saw her and she is so funny. I had no idea how funny she was. She's hysterical. She's very funny. Very funny. Okay, so the next question we have here is from Lori from Tallahassee, Florida, and she says, uh, Dear Monica, I'm in high school, love to sing, and considering a career in the music business. I have been told that I have a natural singing voice and don't need vocal lessons, but I feel it wouldn't hurt. What advice would you give me on how to proceed? You're very lucky. It's if it's true that you have a natural voice, that's way you're way ahead of a lot of people. But you need to study. You need to have someone to coach you in how to perform on stage, how to interpret, know what the song means. If you don't know what the song means, you're just singing. It's more than singing. Learn about the song what the person is singing, and then when you're performing, you are performing that song like that person. And everybody everybody realizes that. That's why all in American Idol, uh, some of them win and some of them don't, and they have nice voices. But right. if, you're just, if you're just finishing high school, sweetheart, you must study voice. Just study performing interpretation if you have a natural voice you don't have to worry just use it in those manners and you'll be safe if you want to be a singer there you go let's see we got another question from lowell uh from canton ohio and lowell says monica what do you feel is the best way for a singer to get noticed by the right music industry people in this day and age <laughs> well, there's so many things to do out there, but you have to uh, 
uh, check them, analyze them. The best thing is to, whatever song you sing the best, showcasing. You have to showcase. And if somebody dislikes the American Idol, that's a showcase. Yeah, so so enter yourself like go go try to be on America's Got Talent, audition for American Idol. There's a lot of uh, a lot of shows out there now that are on t- reality yes. television shows. That's the best way to do it. Try to get yourself on a reality television show. But I'll give you a tip, people. They're gonna take you. Either gotta be really good or really bad. If you're mediocre. Yep. You better and the and and the way the tip to get in on these shows because I've got the inside scoop because I know the people that are casting for these things and let me tell you, come up with a hard luck story. They want to hear that they love stories of hardship. They want stories of the the worse off your life is, the better chance you are getting on. You know how they do. <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. Yeah, you don't know, know how many people who were rejected who sing very well, but they, they're living the life of Riley and they're like, oh, well, you know, you could probably make it on your own. They want hard luck stories, but don't it's make true. it up. It's got to be true. But um, true. that's that's just another way to to help you get on there. So there you go. Uh, our next question comes from Robert from Boston, Massachusetts. And Robert says, uh, dear Monica, what advice would you give to someone who is just starting out? Uh, Hmm, like that's a uh, you, that hmm, I don't know if that's very specific, but I would guess uh, find a good vocal coach and if you want to be a singer or an actor, is he talking it does, about it, an Yeah, they they don't they I know I wish I could I don't know they just send me questions and they don't specify so that doesn't really answer our question, Robert. So I would say as an actor. I'll answer that part for you. You want to start now you're in Boston. So uh, I think that there's probably a lot of good classes in Boston to take. I don't know if you're referring to theater or film or television. You don't say, but the best thing is to go get, take classes at a local community college or a college, or they might have some in the newspaper. I don't know. How, how old is he? I don't, he doesn't say, doesn't say. They send me these emails. They don't give me anything, Monica, nothing, (laughs) nothing. You know what? You tell him this because singing and acting, basically you do the same thing. If you want to be a singer and actor, you get a good, experienced teacher. Yes. Study acting. Now, in New York, we study everything. You, in New York, we studied singing, acting, dancing, even fencing. In California, they don't do that, and that's probably why some of them don't make it. But uh, he's in—he's on the East Coast, so that's what you need to do: Absolutely. get an experienced, good teacher, study acting, singing, and dancing. So you'd be a double threat. Of- Absolutely, and then go to New York. Uh, that's the best thing for you: go to New York, singing, acting, dancing. Go to New York. Okay, let, the next one is from Barry from Winston Salem, North Carolina. And Barry says, uh, what, Monica, what are the essential elements you need to make a great song or album? The essential to make a great song or album? Mm-hmm. Well, it, for the song, if you know how to write, you write your own. <laughs> and But for making an album, somebody has to like what you're doing, sign you up, take you in the studio, record it. You have to have a distributor, and that's basically what you need. You can't just go in. You can go in a studio and do a demo. That's one of the best ways to do it. Go into a studio, do a demo, and then pass it around. Send it to different agencies. And Barry, you know, if you can't afford to do it in a studio, you go get GarageBand and you can do it right on your computer. With the technology that you have today, there is there are people who are producing their own CDs right in the comfort true. of their home. And you really don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars anymore. You can do a kick-ass CD, a whole album right on your computer. You just close wow. the door in your bed, do it 
it right on your laptop and you you can put it on cdbaby.com you can put it on all of these music websites itunes you can put it anywhere and sell it so you don't need to spend thousands just get some good software application you know what it's it, we only have like 10 minutes and i really 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 i would love to get to the rest of the questions but unfortunately i really need to to uh uh, let you hear a song, which is uh, our wonderful Monica Peterson's latest song. It's her lit- latest single. It's entitled "The Thrill Is Gone." Is it "The Thrill Is Gone," Duke, or just "The, the Thrill, Thrill Is Gone"? The, no, "The Thrill Is Gone." This was a song that was picked by um, the Grammys, and it was 2009, not seven. Oh, why did I get yeah. that? Okay, I, I don't know. I, maybe I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I know you said so. <laughs> yeah, for the the best, one of the best vocal performances, and it's called The Thrill is Gone. It's called The Thrill is Gone, and you can get this currently on cdbaby.com, right? And I Right. Right? I right. I you choose. can download it, download it right to your computer, which is what I did today to be able to play it for you. So without further ado, we are going to listen to this song. And then when it's over, we're going to come back and then we're going to find out what exciting things are going on uh, and what projects you have coming up. But I want you to hear this lovely song by Monica Peterson called The Thrill Is Gone. So Ronan, I hope you're listening, honey. Can you play that for me?
Oh, my God. Get it, go! Oh, I'm <laughs> going to push Shirley Bassey right the hell out the window because now it's all, <laughs> it's all about Monica Peterson now. Just forget about it. Wow, that was intense. I love your phrasing. That's Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> that certainly does sound very Sinatra-esque for sure. No, I love it. I love your phrasing. I really love um, uh, your intonation. I just love that. I love the old school jazzy kind of stuff. Now, I don't like that jazz, that fusion jazz and acid jazz and all those other jazz they've come up with. I like the old school vocalist and that is yeah. great. Oh my God, now where, where can we hear more of you? Where can we buy your album? Do you, how many songs do you have? Where do we get it? Yes, I'm yes, I have two. You can get my album. Two, there's two other albums with CD Baby. One is called Dancing and Singing with the Duke. And that has several languages on there, and it's also a dance number on there. And then I have the one, the first one I did when I came to America, well, when the first one I did in America, called International Chanteuse. And that's on CD Baby. You go on www.http slash slash www.cdbaby.com slash Monica Peterson 2. And then dancing and singing for the Duke. You do the same thing, and that would be uh, one. Darling, and, you know, uh, you know what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to get you hip. I'm going to get you up to it. I'm going to tell you something. When you're giving out the website address, you don't have to do the HTTP or the www. Just go cdbaby.com. Whatever the website address is, you just say what it is. You don't even have to, to say the other things. Don't even know them. Yes. Yeah, I just, yeah, you, know, you, you, know. you never have to say that because that's standard. Everybody knows it. So when you oh, say okay. it, people are like, oh my God, she must be like so, so computer illiterate. So you want to sound really hip and happening. You want to sound like, <laughs> I know it's cdbaby.com. Hit me at a cdbaby.com. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I am excited. Now, what are some of the songs on uh, the Thrill is Gone Duke album? Uh, geez, um, on that particular one, which I don't, I don't know if I have it in front of me, but it opens up with, um, don't mean a thing if you ain't got that that's swing. Do up, do up, do up. I love it. Mm -hmm. that's and on saying. the international, on the on the international chanteuse, you've got a lot of standards. There's also a Japanese song on there. No, are you kidding? Now, let me hear a little Japanese, Monica. Give me a little Japanese. That Japanese ballad is on um, International Chanteuse. Give me, give me, give me one, one line. Sing me a little bit. Give me a little Japanese. Sing it up for me. Tokyo Suete, Suete Hikorashi, Maroni Hidushite, Sabe Shatsawo. Is that enough? That's enough. I don't know what the hell you said, but it sounds good That's to me. <laughs> the only thing I know in Japanese is Hajime Mashita, and that is it. And that means, how are you? Nice to meet you. Oh, my God. Well, we are going to check that out. You can order uh, The Thrill is Gone Duke. You can order the single cdbaby.com, Monica Peterson, also available on iTunes, International Chanteuse. What, you got anything exciting coming up? Are you performing anything coming out? What do you got going on? I'm working on my new um, album, which has to be ready for the Grammys. I've oh got nine. God, you're, nine. Gonna be, you're gonna be on the Grammys again? Yes, I missed it this year. Next year, because um, you have to have twelve songs. I only have nine because I want to push my album and a song. You can have the album. You can have the best song and uh, or the singer of the year or the comer of the year, whatever on Grammys. So I'm working on that. And uh, I'm also um, doing my poetry. I'm making a book of poetry, 
which I hoped to um, sell. And uh, I went on several commercial interviews. Hope I'm hoping to get just one. Well, so, one, one can hold you over for the year if you get a good national. So, absolutely, you got to get your agent set to get you out there on the auditions. Well, listen, when your book of poetry, <laughs> excuse me, when your book of poetry comes out, please come back on the show. Can I can I bring you back on the show and and have you uh, promote the book of poetry? Oh, absolutely. You can also my my new CD will be ready probably in a few months. Oh. I have to get three. Yes, I have nine songs. I have to get three more. Okay. And I have to, have to go into the studio and record it. Well, so, send, uh, well, let me know and I'll announce it on the radio show and I'll make sure people go out and buy it so you can buy yourself a good, a good Christmas present. Well, listen, it's we're all out of time. We want to thank you, Monica, so much for coming on. We want to invite you to come back and be a guest. And we want to thank everybody for listening to Monica Peterson today in Question Reality. So check her out, Monica, MonicaPeterson.com. Say goodbye, Monica. Bye-bye. See you soon. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio.